Hello and welcome to the Lake Oroville update for April 2024. The water level at California's second largest reservoir is currently 890 feet, 7 inches above mean sea level. Thanks to a long series of rain and snowstorms over the past few months, the water level in Lake Oroville has increased by 28 feet since our last Lake Oroville update. The current elevation is 249 feet above minimum power pool and only nine feet below full pool elevation. Hello and welcome to Time Bomb. In this episode, we'll begin with reviewing the Lake Oroville water level statistics. This is a very tricky time for Lake Oroville. The reservoir is at near full capacity and there's an above average snowpack that is already melting and will add even more water to the system. How are dam managers performing? Well, you're about to find out. You know what to do. Hit that like button. Leave me a comment. This is Time Bomb. Let's get started. The current water elevation of 890 feet is 50 feet above the 840 foot average water level for this time of year. The highest water level at Lake Oroville was recorded on February 11th, 2017 at 902 and a half feet. The record low for the reservoir was set on September 30th, 2021, when the level declined to 628 feet, 8 inches. The current capacity of the Lake Oroville Reservoir is 3,323,000 acre feet, which is 96.9% of full pool capacity. This is a chart of Lake Oroville's water level for the 2024 water year that began on October 1st, 2023. Let me add a line to show where the full pool elevation is. At the start of the water year, Lake Oroville's water elevation was at 833 feet. From there, the water level declined to a low point of 811 feet 6 inches on December 17th. Today, the water level has risen to 890 feet 7 inches. The Lake Oroville Reservoir has risen an incredible 79 feet since that low point back in December. It's springtime at Lake Oroville, and the folks at the California Department of Water Resources are doing their best to capture as much water as possible in Lake Oroville without risking overtopping the dam or possibly causing a flooding situation. There is no question that it is difficult to manage this amount of moving water, so let's take a look at the details to see exactly how they're doing. The winter season in Northern California is over and we have an above average snowpack for this time of year. This is a chart of the snow water equivalent for the Northern Sierra Trinity region. Remember, the snow water equivalent, or SWE, is the amount of water in inches that will result when that snow melts. The snowpack peaked on April 8th with a snow water equivalent of 34.9 inches. That's 127% of the normal peak snowpack of 28.3 inches. That is really good news. However, today, the snowpack has already declined to 25 inches. That's a loss of 10 inches of SWE, or 28% of the snowpack that has already melted. So the above average snowpack is already melting, and that water is adding to the already high inflows to Lake Oroville. This is a chart of the inflows to Lake Oroville for the 2024 water year. As you can see, we had a big spike in late January and one in late February. These spikes and in inflows were caused by the atmospheric rivers that dumped heavy amounts of rain and snow in the region. But since that last spike in February, the inflows have remained strong, above the 10,000 cubic square foot per second level. Now let's take a look at the outflows. Here is a chart of the outflows from Oroville Dam for the 2024 water year. Here we can see spikes in outflows due to the large rain and snow events. And the outflows remained right around 10,000 cubic square feet until April 8th. That's when dam managers started to reduce outflows. This is a notification from the California Department of Water Resources announcing that outflows from Oroville Dam will be reduced from 10,000 cubic feet per second to 7,000 cubic feet per second. This reduction in outflows was to account for reduced inflows into the reservoir. <laughs> well, unfortunately, inflows have not been reduced. 
Then again, on April 19th, the DWR announced they would further reduce outflows to 5,000 cubic feet per second. Again, they said this was due to reduced inflows. But again, I'm not seeing the reduced inflows. This is why water levels at Lake Oroville are rising so fast. As you can see in the water level chart, the water level increases are speeding up. This is far from the careful approach to full pool that we would normally expect. For example, last year we were in a similar situation with a near full Lake Oroville and a high level of inflows. As the water approached the full pool level, the water level was increasing at a rate of 0.48 feet a day, or 5.5 inches each day. Now that is a careful approach to full pool elevation. But this year, that rate of water level increase has more than doubled to almost a foot per day. Again, this is not the careful approach to full pool that we would expect. In my opinion, water levels are rising too fast as we approach that full pool elevation. This will be interesting to watch over the next few weeks as that water level inches closer and closer to the full pool elevation. On April 23rd, the California Department of Water Resources announced an increase to water deliveries to the state water project for the 2024 water year. The forecasted allocation has increased from 30% last month to 40% this month. The increase will provide an additional 420,000 acre feet of water, enough to serve an estimated 1.5 million households for a year. The increased allocation is based on an 800,000 acre foot increase in storage at Lake Oroville and the latest snowpack reports showing an, an above average snowpack. The 40% water allocation is for the water supplies for the contractors located south of the Delta. The state water project contractors north of the Delta will receive 65% of requested water deliveries and the Feather River Settlement will receive the full requested water allocation of 100%. While this increase in water deliveries is good news, it is still far below the amount of water requested. With the reservoirs in California at near full capacity and, a, and an above average snowpack, why can't they increase deliveries above that 40% mark? I mean, the water situation in California does not get much better than it currently is. What type of conditions would it take for the state water project to provide 100% of requested water deliveries? That's a question I'd like to get an answer to. Anyway, hey, that's all I have for this video. Please let me know what you think in the comment section. Are the dam operators increasing water levels too fast? I think they are. In the meantime, please check out some of my other videos and consider subscribing. I really appreciate your support.